Hi, we're, we're the, the Psychic, Psychic Twins. Twins. I'm Terry. And I'm Linda. A lot of you may be familiar with this case. We're going to talk about the mysterious drowning of screen legend Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood once said, quote, I've been terrified of the water, and yet it seems I'm forced to go into it on every movie that I make. Actress Natalie Wood was born in San Francisco on July 20th, 1938. She was a child star in Miracle on 34th Street. It was the classic Christmas story, you may remember. At 16, she co-starred with James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. That was 1955. In 1961, she played Maria in West Side Story and then a glamorous stripper in Gypsy and was nominated for an Oscar for her performance in Splendor in the Grass. In 1981, Natalie Wood drowned during a boat trip with her husband, TV star Robert Wagner, and actor Christopher Walken, her co-star on Brainstorm, the sci-fi movie. But this American icon remains infamously known for the circumstances of her very mysterious death. Was it a terrible accident? Was it suicide? Or was it murder? Did Natalie Wood have an eerie premonition of her own death? The two of us wrote a book called Died Too Young and channeled 11 celebrities after they passed. We literally had conversations with these celebrities and we asked them about their mysterious deaths. Natalie Wood was one of them. What really happened to Natalie that fateful day she drowned off the coast of Catalina Island in 1981? Natalie went missing after a night of heavy drinking on her family's yacht, The Splendor. Also on the boat that night was her husband, TV star Robert Wagner, RJ, another actor, Christopher Walken, the famous film star, and the captain, Dennis Deverne. The night she died, she and her husband, Robert Wagner, had a terrible argument. They were drinking way too much all day long at different bars and finally Robert told the captain that she had gone missing and the next day her body was found in the water in her nightgown and red down jacket and socks. Her death was ruled an accident two weeks later and that case was closed. Robert said that he thought she untied the dinghy, the little rowboat, to go ashore or that she must have fallen into the water when she untied the rowboat. But Natalie made it very clear to us that she did not slip and fall into the water as Robert Wagner said. In 2011, the Sheriff's Department reopened the death investigation of Natalie Wood. Now, six years later, there is new evidence and new witnesses. Yes. Clearly, there has been a major cover-up with this case mm -hmm. and around the circumstances of her death. Astonishingly, it has taken nearly 40 years to crack a cold case. Well, even Deverne, the captain of the boat, was involved in the cover-up. He knew that the original story wasn't true and came forward in 2011 to tell the truth. We believe that Christopher Walken and Captain Deverne were forced to go along with Wagner's original account, which was not backed up by the evidence. The Los Angeles County coroner knew the truth about what happened and knew there were bruises found all over Natalie's body. He stated it in the autopsy report in 1981, and even her body, her arms, her torso, her face were covered with bruises and contusions. The coroner determined that these had happened before she went into the water. Were people paid off to keep everything quiet? We think that that is possible. Well, they closed the investigation and the case was reclassified as undetermined. We believe that her drowning was not an accident. We've always believed that, as the officials claimed for years. Yet those who are responsible have never been held accountable. How is that? Hollywood is a dark and powerful place. And as you know, we've lived in Hollywood for 28 years, you guys. So we have a firsthand knowledge of this pretty dark place. The secrets that the Hollywood movie industry keep are shocking and very few people would believe the lengths to which people are manipulated and controlled by the Hollywood elite. Well, the captain, Dennis Deverne, is now saying that he was in another part of the cabin when he heard Robert and Natalie shouting at each other for a very long time. He said it was very, very loud and it went on for quite a while. Suddenly, 
everything went silent. Robert told Deverne that Natalie had disappeared and instructed Deverne to search the boat. Together with Walken, they conspired to put a story together that they'd all agree on, that she untied the dinghy and slipped or took the dinghy ashore. They've always maintained their story is the truth, but we don't believe it's the truth I, at all. I never believed that. Their stories have even changed over time, especially Wagner's. Well, remember that they said that the rowboat was banging on the side of the boat and you know RJ said this the for, dinghy yeah yeah he said this for years he said yeah. that the rowboat was banging on the side of the boat and she untied it first of all the captain is now disputing that he said that is very tightly tied and that it wasn't banging he said it, it was banging. not banging against the boat that was so a lie it's hard to fathom that the LA police really is. ever believed this cockamamie story to begin with we don't believe Natalie wanted to die we don't believe she was suicidal that night she had two beautiful daughters yeah, she'd had a hard life and a couple, you know, a couple of bad marriages, but you know, she really wasn't suicidal, and her sister has even said that. Well, here's something else that's interesting. Natalie was always terrified of water, and she couldn't swim. Everyone close to her knew that she would never go out in a small rowboat in the middle of the night. It was freezing cold. She was in her nightgown and her socks, and nobody would do that. The thing about this is her mother knew that, but she agreed to sign her onto this movie when she was a very little girl, like seven or eight. Her mother signed her onto this movie that they promised her she wouldn't have to go in the water, but she had to go in the water in this dark, cold water off a pier or something. And her mother let her do this, even knowing she had this terror. I think she was having premonitions of her own death. Oh, I do too. Mm -hmm. I mean, her so intuition so. Yeah. was not as sharp, maybe because she did have a drinking problem. And yeah. we felt like she drank a lot to numb out and escape her pain. Yeah. Well, let's just take a quick look back at Natalie's life. She began her film career at age four, and that is when the grooming started. The Hollywood producers were very controlling of every move she made, and she felt she needed to be perfect at a very young age. She was was way too young to know better. Her mother wanted her to be famous, the typical classic stage mom. Natalie once tried to kill herself with an overdose of sleeping pills, and she regretted it later. You can imagine what being a child star was like in the 50s. Yeah. You know, how abusive that's it why, must have been. Well, that's why I worry a lot about the young YouTubers who were starting so young, mm -hmm. and you know, when you get to be older, it's more yeah. difficult for them. Absolutely. When Natalie's marriage to Robert Wagner was ending, she had a very tumultuous affair with the actor Warren Beatty. They were both in their early 20s, and it really pushed her over the edge. It was a passionate affair. They were terribly toxic for each other, and it was a roller coaster of emotions, even violent at times. We feel Natalie did have past lives, by the way, with, with Warren Beatty and with Robert Wagner, and they were not easy lives. Well, Natalie and Robert were star-crossed lovers for sure. And the pressure of being a child actress had to have been so intense for her. She felt she had no control over her life. She was just a little kid when she did Miracle on 34th Street. She had made 30 films by 30. the time she was 18 years old, if you can believe that. That's oh. crazy. We've made 16 films and that, was, it, that took us decades. As child abuse. I mean, basically, she started when she was like four or five. Well, Natalie told us in the channeling we did with her for our book that her husband had many affairs, and some have been documented, actually. Natalie was sort of like the perfect little child. She was more like a doll, someone who had no feelings. Um, she was a woman who couldn't really think for herself. She wasn't in touch with her emotions at all. Yeah. Because they'd been beaten up. Yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, that's what being a Hollywood star is like, and or was at least at that time. As difficult as it was for Natalie, she learned to perform on cue and hide her feelings and emotions. She was dead inside, basically, and terrified of making a mistake and being disapproved of. Nowadays, the truth is more exposed than it was back then, thanks to the Me Too movement and so on, and the Time's Up movement. But even now, the big stars and producers pay to cover up the truth and suppress it. Not all of it's going to come out you guys. Eventually it does come out, but it's going to take many years for a lot of these stories 
to, to surface? Well, it's true. I mean, we believe there are negative people in the world and there are negative forces or energies that did not want Natalie to come out with the truth. No, they sure didn't. There are forces greater than we are that want to suppress the truth on many levels. Yeah and dimensions, but the light always wins. Here's an excerpt from our book, Died Too Young. It's actually a message we channeled from Natalie Wood. Mm -hmm. Quote, be aware, do not let people in power tell you what to do or control you, lie to you or deceive you. Do not let anyone control you or take advantage of you for a second. You must stand up for truth, write about it, speak about it, and light up the earth. Light up the earth with your light and power and love and kindness. Do not let the darkness win. I love you, Natalie. Natalie told us actually in our channeling with her that she is not angry. She has forgiven everyone involved, but she feels strongly that her killer must pay and so do we. And it's high time. I'm not sure if it'll happen just because, hello, it's Hollywood. This is the second time the case has been reopened, but um, we're hopeful that the person we feel is guilty, you know, will at least stand trial for this. There has been a break in the case actually. Yes, this is exciting. exciting. It is. Yeah, we'll see. But last week, Dennis Deverne, the captain of the yacht, The Splendor, revealed on TV that he lied to authorities. Shocker, he now claims that Robert Wagner was responsible for Natalie's yeah. death. And the LA County Sheriff's Department has reopened the investigation into the death of Natalie Wood. Although her death was originally deemed an accident, in 2013, a new coroner's report stated that non-accidental bruises were on Natalie's face and body, opening up the possibility that she was assaulted before she entered the water and that's exactly what we feel happened and that's what she told us mm -hmm. the police are uncertain if her death is actually a murder which would be the only crime falling outside of the statute of limitations at this stage of the game in 2014 Deverne wrote a book called Goodbye Natalie, Goodbye Splendor. The authors claim that Wagner prevented Deverne from calling the Coast Guard until it was way too late. Wagner would not let the captain of the boat turn on the searchlights or go looking for his missing wife. Can you imagine they yeah. sat and got drunk on scotch while his wife drowned? Can and you imagine? I just that is like the most horrifying thing to me ever. Crucial witnesses and information were ignored by the authorities at the time of Natalie's death. In fact, two new witnesses have come forward to say they saw the two of them fighting on the back of the boat before she went missing it's and crazy. disappeared into the ocean. It's crazy. I mean, to, to just sit there and get drunker while she's out there like screaming for help. People heard her shouting for quite a while and then they found her floating. I, then I said, I just think it's tragedy. It's a tragedy. It's such a tragedy. It's, it's, uh, it's almost like one of those Greek tragedies. I mean, where it's just ill-fated from the beginning. If they have the evidence that Wagner did it, then he should be arrested yeah. and tried. We always believed that he did it. The only evidence is that witnesses saw them fighting on the back of the boat that night. One witness said he thought an assault was going on. Also, Wagner and Walken both refused to speak with investigators to this day. And that's very suspicious in itself, a huge red flag. Oh, it really is. Well, Natalie deserves justice, we feel. Yeah. But we believe in a karmic justice, justice that we may not see in our lifetime. What do you think happened to Natalie Wood? We hope you read our book, Die Too Young. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. And, and we'll, we'll see you in the future. future.